Hello everyone. How are you doing? <laughs> Let's see if I've got everything set up. Hello everyone and well, welcome to another Thursday. It's the 3rd of February 2022. Can you believe it? It's already a new month already and I think I've got everything running. I just have to confirm everything's up and running. Excellent condition it says. I've seen people in the chat. Andreas Brillin, hello. Obel. Mia PC, hello. Friedrich, Engage, Jen, all the usual suspects here. Geoff, uh, Jules. Jirla, woo! -hoo. DJ Peterson, Arvid is here as well. Sorry to disappoint you today, Arvid. It's gonna be longer today. So last week was a disaster because I only did an eight minute video. So we have to cover cover our mistakes here. So why is this song on repeat? Uh, is the volumes all right, guys? I haven't streamed in a while. So just uh, if you could confirm that the music is, I know it's annoying probably. It's some weird uh, like reggae offbeat thing. You hate me, yeah, I hate. I don't hate you, even though you dislike all my videos. It's okay. 24 hours. I don't think so, Mia. It's uh, I'm actually oh, past 220k though, so we're not... Well, it's not approaching 300k as fast as before. And I've sort of forgotten what it was like to stream for 24 hours. So I make no promises, but it could be happening again at some point. Oh, connection is freezing. All right. Is it, uh, is it all right for everyone else? I did put it on ultra low latency so I can keep up with the chats. So maybe there's actually an issue with that one. Alessandro, hello, off the rails. Can't hear the music. All right, it's super low, actually. All right, great, great, guys. Let's go for the official one in a second here. Like, concurrent viewers, 38. People have got fed up with me now. But 10 likes, that's good. So let's do an official intro. Hello everyone and welcome to another Thursday. I'm Stefan Passion, also known as Infensia, and today it's a live stream. I've done a, a premiere a couple of times ago and also feel really en encouraged or not encouraged, I feel excited. I'm going to be doing some Blender today because I've done a, a few Unity stuff, not the proper uh, tutorial things of course. Uh, it's, um, it's coming at some point, I've been saying that for like a year now. <laughs> but I'm really excited to do some more blending, because, blending, because I've realized that the, the further I stay away from doing Blender stuff, I'm actually losing my my speed at it. So I have a uh, maybe I'll even do uh, episode 101 at some point of uh, the 10 minute modeling challenge again. Send coffee, exactly. That's what we did on the 24 uh, 24 hour challenge last time. Exactly that. Hello from Germany, Sven. Hello from Sweden there. Live streams are great. Happy you like it. Blendering. Excited. I'll, uh, let's see. What I've got everything. Yeah, I've got my blue lights set up. Everything feels right. Feels great. I've been having a really exciting time, actually. So uh, apart from having COVID, that sucked. But it feels like now I've got through it and I put my family through the whole thing. And I, I, I'm still uh, alive and kicking at the moment. So I'm hoping that we're actually going to see some change worldwide now. Now that I've had it, it can go back to normal, I think. <laughs> so I'm excited uh, for, for the spring, and it's also very exciting times, uh, working very much on the game right now. And uh, we turned down a publishing deal in the end, or what? It, we, I can't exactly we say we turned it down. We decided not to proceed with it anyway. So we're going to self-publish Line War after all. Really excited about that. And we're uh, going to participate in Steam Fest. That's the plan now. So we're preparing our game demo for that one. And that's going to happen uh, in uh, just a few months. So we have to do that. So we're bu building up the server, scaling. i am uh, created some new trailer stuff. I'm doing uh, a lot of polishing in the interface, creating tutorials and everything like that. So I'm pulling like 12 to 14 hours days. Uh, I've been doing that this week and last week. But I'm not really complaining because I'm. It's just too much fun to do the game development stuff. And then on top of that, I'm still doing some freelancing stuff, and I'm creating a character pack that I'm going to be releasing at some point, and uh, they're called the Infancia Misfits. So I'll be able to tell everyone a little bit more about that too. So and uh, there's another game being developed with those misfits. There's uh, more. I'm doing a lot of building, modeling work. Um, uh, what am I not doing? I don't know. So. Super excited about everything. Let's have a look here in the chat what's going on. Jizzy with... Oh, that's a dangerous name to say on the stream. Infancia, big fan. Thanks. No caps, guys. Thanks, Harvard, for keeping up the... Oh, Rekt. I'm not even going to say your full name. I've done that many... Rekt is here. Welcome back, my friend. It's been a long time since I saw you. And I know you've been busy with work, or at least that's your excuse, because you've been ignoring... Uh, probably not the Discord, because I've seen that you've been there too. It's me who's been uh, not having time for that one. But I'm really excited to see you back. Hope you're all doing well. 
I can see you in the chat. Perfect. Oh, you have COVID now, Irish birds. I hope you get through it okay. Hopefully everyone's getting the lighter version now, so it's uh, we're going to pull through it. Hello from India. We're at Portugal. We're, we're all over the place now. Great. 95 people in the stream. So when we officially get up to 100, I'm going to do some modeling. Uh, it's cold here, rainy, dull, but it doesn't stop me. I don't hardly even see outside because uh, I've, uh, I've got one window in this basement thing here and I blocked that window off so no one can see in and I can't see out. That's the way we like it. All right, let's have a look. What are we doing today? So actually, just as I said, when I hit 100, I'm going to announce what we're going to be doing today. And then it dropped down to 87. So let's keep it flowing a little bit like that. I'm excited now because six minutes has already gone past. And last week on the premiere, the video would have nearly been over. But now I hope you you can grab yourself a coffee, have a beer, a, a glass of, I don't know, like uh, soft. I don't know what the English word for that is. If you're a kid, uh, it's funny that I've got a lot of viewers from everything spanning from like uh, 10, 11, 12, starting up with game devs and to like, well, n the generation above my one. Anyway, let's leave it at that. Soda. Yeah, but soda is uh, sparkly stuff, isn't it? So soft is, uh, what What do you call the one that it doesn't have the, that's not carbonated? We have to solve this now. <clears throat> oh, you're sick. Wrecked, are you sick? I hope not. So I hope you get well soon in that case, and I hope everyone who's ill gets well soon. Watching my videos will make everyone just want to like go to sleep probably. Big fan from India, thanks. Big, uh, I was going to say big uh, YouTuber from Sweden, but <laughs> it's not that big. Coffee, beer for later, great. All right, 95 people. I'm still, I'm going to stick to that one. It's going to be a slow intro now because I'm going to, oh, 98. Okay, we're getting close now. I don't know if that's live update. Just a head cold. How do you know it's not COVID? Have you checked it out? The testing in Sweden has been really crazy. We we ordered uh, tests for the family and they drive a taxi with a test kit out to the house. And then you do the test and then drive it back to the hospital. And I have a, I have a good feeling that taxi company is making like a lot of money. Because they, they I think we spent 22 billion on taxi deliveries of COVID tests or something. <laughs> Please pronounce my name. S okay. Sujal. <laughs> I have no idea how to say that one. All right, 90. So we're going to have a... You have to tell your friends if you're going to know what we're going to be doing today. Because we're still on 90 concurrent viewers now. So I'm going to have to... I'm going to be cranking it up. It's not... I'll, it's not. I'll just start to speak Swedish now. It's not, I'm going to bring my Star Wars book soon and, and play some Star Wars sounds if you're not careful. Oh, I would love to see a, a day in the life... Uh, a day in the life of Infensia blog. Well, th it's pretty much like this this but stretch it out for like 16 hours so i need to get out more i bought the, a really cool camera before where is it even because i was going to do a lot more vlogging but i forgot where i put it now so because i i had an excuse of not doing vlogging because my camera was mounted here and i thought mm, i can't really be bothered taking that away it's too much hassle so i'll buy myself a new camera that'll motivate me and uh, it motivated me to buy it and then i just haven't gotten around to getting out i need to get out and get some yeah, someone said Star Wars sound. That's right. Should I go and grab it? Hold on. Let's go and grab it. Because I'm waiting for more subscribers here. Hold on. Let's hope I have my pants up this time. <laughs> I did one intro once and uh, I had tracky pants on and they were like half slanting down, halfway down. That was a disaster. I got some uh, comments about that, how dare you, and I thought I can't cut that away because it's, it's a day in the life of Infensia and that's what it's like. Alright, let's check this out. This is the book I was telling you about. I've had that in a few episodes. It's called Star Wars Sound Effects, but in Swedish, you defect enough. And we're on 98 uh, people watching now, so I can actually take the time here. Let's uh, check out something. Let's get a random sound here. All right, Chewbacca speaks, everyone knows what that sounds like. All right, let's try 59 here. Have I got battery? Yeah. Okay, that wasn't 59, that was 130. That's the hyperdrive of the Star Wars, of the Millennium, Fal Millennium Falcon. Let's go up to 59, whatever that was. I didn't plan anything. I'm so, I'm so unplanned that you wouldn't even believe it. Uh, 
it went from doing Thursday modeling videos, like I started to do them on the weekends in the first 50 episodes of the 10 minute modeling challenge. Then I started to do them on Wednesday in the evening. Then I started to do them Wednesday at the middle of the night. And then I started to do them Wednesday night to Thursday at like 2 a.m. And then I started doing them Thursday morning. And then in some panic cases, I did them Thursday afternoon. And then now here we are live streaming. That's how you solve uh, that when you, when you don't have a... Uh, if you if you uh, like to prepare, prepare to luck. Hmm? Oh. Okay, here we go. Fifty nine. Okay, it's a background sound from drugs, drugs trolling. So what's that in English? Pulling tractor beam. Oh, a tractor beam or something. Let's have a look. Here we go. That was the most quiet sound ever. We're on 99 uh, concurrent viewers, so I still have some time. I have to get some uh, something that makes more sound. What's that? Another sign I'm not preparing here. Let's go for... <clears throat> uh, the cool thing about this is that it explains a lot how all the signs were actually recorded as well, which is pretty cool. Okay, here's uh, a scout is hitting a tree. That, that must be surely exciting. Let's have a look. 156. 95 viewers, so there's still no stream start officially. We need to hit 100. Tell your mom, tell your friends. Mia, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm relying on you to send out a, a massive tweet now. Let's see. 150. Who, does everyone use Twitter today or is it uh, Instagram? Here we go. Let's try it. So a scout hits a tree, or I don't know if it's not called a scout. Whoa, hit me in the face. That was the weirdest sound anyway. Okay. A hundred people are viewing now and I've pulled out the most uh, rubbish sound from all of Star Wars. Let's go. Uh, so hit a hundred people. Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, today I booted up Blender 3.0 and I'm gonna do some old school modeling now. This is how we all got started back in the day about two, two years ago, a little bit more. And I did the 10 minute modeling challenge, of course, and uh, I progressed a little bit through the while. And I started the very first episode, I created my own palette from the very beginning, or I downloaded a few from lowspec.com. But through the episodes, we have landed up in this uh, texture. A lot, of you will, a lot of you will recognize this one. It's my gradient Infancia texture, and it's downloadable if you go to the description, of course. And a quick run through for anyone who's new here, maybe uh, I see a lot of old faces here, not old faces, like but reoccurring faces. People are coming back. But for those of you who don't know, for some reason, I've uh, got this texture here, this albedo texture. And it's got the same sort of colors repeated itself, apart from these ones, they are desaturated. Plug that on into here, and I'm combining this with ambient occlusion because I'm using EV to render nowadays, every now and then. And I'm multiplying these two, and uh, or I'm combining them with a the multiplier here, and then I throw them into the base color. So, and then, I should mention as well that I've got this emission one and it's the same pretty much, but the top uh, and the lower left quadrant is totally black. No input there at all because I don't want that to be emissive. And you can see here the lower right quadrant, we've got uh, the same colors repeating themselves, but we're shading them towards black. And we're plugging this into the emission here. And I've got alpha as well, don't really use that too often. So the beauty thing about this one, the beautiful thing is that if we create a, an object here, I should have screencast keys on, actually. Oh, here we go again. Screen, thank you. I realized it this time. Last time I modeled a whole boombox without even realizing that I wasn't uh, showing anything. So let's have, have a look. Uh, that time my comments exploded, of course. I have to read that again. How can you be so rubbish at, uh, at live streaming that you... <laughs> fail chick. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't even bring my fail chick. All right, let's do that again. So, Blender, here we are. At least I... Uh, I'm going to enable screencast here, keys here, and I am definitely showing now. That's right. Okay, let's do it again. Stealthy boombox. Yeah, and I did a repeat modeling of that one, of course. So, yeah, screen cap. Here we go. Sorry about that, guys. So, what I was saying, I've got uh, this gradient texture right here. For those of you who have seen Infancia streams before, of course, this grew up uh, with us <laughs> together when we did the 10 minute modeling challenges. Started with some sim simpler colors, and now we've got uh, four quadrants of repeating colors. And a lot of you will wonder why are there a lot of different colors and why do they repeat themselves, of course. Stupid. But it's not stupid because uh, 
in the top left quadrant here, when we place the, place the UVs on top of these, we create really cool colors onto our objects, and you don't have to texture, like do all the texture drawing and unwrapping complicated stuff. And the lower right quadrant here, same colors, but if I move my UVs down here, then they get applied with the emission from the lower right quadrant here. So that's why there's no emission up here, because it just picks up a black color and it doesn't emit anything. But if I move the UVs down here, and then you control how much it should be em emitting as well, then you can actually start making this stuff glowing. And I also I mentioned when I didn't stream, or well, I didn't show my, uh, my screen, that I have ambient inclusion here. That channel is enabled in the settings here somewhere. Let's see. Here, ambient occlusion on the light here is ticked. And then you get access to this one, and I bring this in. I can modify it a little bit with a color ramp, so I bring it into the FAC, and then I color ramp it a little bit to get a stronger effect, and then I multiply it, and then we get the base color there. So that's pretty much it. And I've also got this one, which is uh, for transparency. So this is full opacity, and then we've got some transparency controls here, but I don't really use them so often. Sometimes I do, but not right now. And in here, we've got, uh, I've got uh, this one. I think it was, uh, I had an, a, a little uh, session there. Oh, we got the Wild West music going on now. That's especially for you coming out right now, uh, Rectum. I don't know if you remember, but of course the intro where I went <laughs> like that. Hmm. And now I remember to switch on the full screen before I did that one. So, but I'm not gonna whistle. That uh, would be a disaster. <clears throat> Okay, so I was saying that this scene also grew up with us a little bit, and I created uh, something I learned. Uh, a lot of the people that study art and stuff, they learn these things in school, and when they study uh, arts classes and fancy stuff like that. For me, it takes like 47 years to realize that stuff looks really cool if you've got lights coming in from the side. You've got a red light from the left here, and I've got a blue light from the right. And apparently that's like a super common thing. Everyone knows that, but I didn't. And when I thought I figured something out, um, breaking some new grounds here, it turns out that uh, that's rubbish. It, uh, it It's like everyone knows it, but I didn't. And then I have a little backlight here as well. So with these lights here, uh, I can, uh, so I'm, I'm all over the place today. So the, this scene evolved after I do a lot of uh, normal low poly modeling. I started to do some cyberpunk stuff with the cyberpunk room. We did a cyber tank, we did a space hangar and stuff. So this is the scene that we ended up with. And if you check out my history, of course, you can see this uh, when I modeled it. But I'm gonna start with this one today, I was thinking. Let's do some, uh, pay, pay some tribute now to the, the stuff that we did uh, maybe uh, like two, three months ago, something like that. All right, let's have a look at the chat as well, of course. All right. Stefan's voice is like music anyway. Well, I don't know how to sing, so that would be... I tried to sing in the car today, and uh, speaking about disasters, I was actually starting to worry that people outside the car would hear it, even though I was like on a motorway. So it, um, that, that would be scary. All right, so people are seeming to speak uh, more to each other. I'll tell you what, if you want to say something to me specifically, Try to make it super visible so I can see it. I don't know. You shouldn't really use caps. <coughs> super chats. <coughs> Pardon me. So that would work probably. And some of the at stuff, of course. Of course. So, all right. I think uh, top chat. I should switch this to live. Can you yodel? Nope. I, I cannot. Uh, they're probably better in, uh, in the likes of, uh, I don't know, the Alps. Uh, that's what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps. If anyone knows where that line comes from, give me a shout in the comments. And uh, that's it. I may not... There's a lot of stuff that you guys know a lot more about me than me, but there's some stuff that I know. And I surprise myself sometimes. All right. We can at you in fancy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right, DJ Peterson. You can. So the miner, what are we modeling today? I'm going to do uh, something like a futuristic little building here. So that's what I was trying to get to. How? 20 minutes into the stream, guys, and I haven't even started streaming. I'm wasting everyone's time. Sorry about that. All right. All right. Let's have a look. Oh, I like this song, actually. Check this out. Bonnie Grace from Epidemic Sound. I'm, I'm not sponsored by them. I actually pay my subscription to get their music, but check this out. Let's, let's play it from the beginning. There we go. Turning up the volume a little bit now. Oh my god, the lifesaver is live right now. Lord Kiwi. Are you a Kiwi? Are you actually all the way in New Zealand? Or is it that you're just using an imposter name? 
All right, let's check. This is a. Uh, but no, I, I, was, I could speed model to this, but I'm not. I'm going to turn down the volume a little bit in a second as well. But let's uh, put this one on. Finally, I got to see you. Greetings and good build. Little uh, snitch. Yeah, welcome. Make a smile, man. All right, check this out. I'm actually super happy today. Why am I so happy? I have no idea. I'm sending some good vibes out there. If you're stuck thinking you don't know what to model, you don't know what to do, uh, should I make a game, should I prototype, you should do it. You should. Uh, it feels like I haven't even drank that much coffee yet, but I'm sending some energy everyone's way, you know. So stay positive, find that vibe, uh, start creating stuff. After this video, you'll be super energized to do stuff again. I'm pretty sure about that. So let's get back to it. All right, there we go, 114. I'm actually climbing subscribers, wasting people's time now. <laughs> Can feel the power, Justin, good. To... And Gerard, I have no idea if I say that. Gerard, Gerard, needed to hear that. Yeah, go for it, guys and girls, or girl. I used to have one girl subscriber, I think. All right, let's go for it. Now we start officially, 22 minutes in. So I've got uh, the diff like uh, just a cube here, and I'm gonna to model somewhat of a um, uh, a building today, a sci-fi building, because I'm going to be going into a stretch where I've got to model about 2,000 buildings in just a moment again. So let's uh, see, I have to try to not look at the chat too much because I get distracted. So I'm going to make sure that I grab the texture or the material here. So I've got this uh, uh, material, I tab, tab, and I go to UV editing, A to select everything, scale zero on the left, and here we go. First operation modeling wise is done. I'm going to put it to some sort of a gray or dark thing here. And uh, I'm debating whether I should. I think usually I model uh, with the cavity look, if you have, don't know what that is, if you uh, get that question a lot, like what are these uh, black lines, all or the, the bright lines here. And it's uh, in the viewport here settings, I've got uh, texture selected and cavity, that's what's bringing those lines in. And then you wanna change uh, this one here to both and then grab these sliders and drag them up and you get this pretty look here. And then I've got a rendered view here so we can see what uh, the end result is gonna look like. So, <clears throat> oh, a huge fan from Norway. I won't hold that against you, Christian. I've got a few Norwegian fans. Thanks, welcome, neighbor. So, okay, so I've got the building here and let's see, where am I ended up? For some reason it ended up in my camera collection. Let's drag that out there. So, here we go, let's begin. And sometimes uh, when I model stuff, I I try to model it to pretty much the dimensions that you're going to be using. And a building, usually I put floor heights. Uh, let's say bring that one down and I do like G, Z, and let's say 3.5 meters. So that could be a, four, a floor height or maybe we'll do 4 meters today. G, Z, 4. Uh, the nice thing about this is that everything will sort of, you don't have to be super accurate with everything, unless you have to be super accurate with everything, but I don't. Uh, I'm wondering if I'm noticing a bug with the grid here, but I don't. It's probably my ground that I need to send down just slightly. Let's try that, because I'm noticing my... Uh, it's flickering with this uh, thing there, so that's it. But I'll tell you what, I don't, I don't actually need to see the grid at all. So let's grab that one and bring it up instead. And disable the grid for now. There we go. So now we've got something that's four meters high. Let's uh, see, we, uh, I'll make, make that a little bit smaller. G, X, and then maybe make it 10 meters that way. And then it doesn't have to be exact, G, X. I just like to see it roughly. So now it's about 20 meters because I went 10 meters in each direction. And let's see, width wise of this one, Let's just, uh, I could just drag it, but I want to know roughly what, it's, what it is, so I'll do G, Y, and maybe we'll do 8 meters. No, a little bit too, little, maybe 10 meters. That's it. So it's two, 20 by 10 meters. That's pretty good. <clears throat> so so let's make some, uh, some stuff with emission and cyberpunk. Let's uh, bring back that vibe again here, of course. And uh, we'll do uh, uh, some, uh, first of all, I'll... Uh, uh, if you know me, I do a lot of uh, Control R to do loop cuts. Let's start with a few of those. Let's just grab uh, this Control R, make something fun here. E to extrude this one. Let's say we wanted an entrance here. Control R. Let's extrude this one. 
to there. This could be our the bottom of our building. And then here, let's grab these and then do I to inset. And then E to extrude. I think I'll do it like a little small floor like this first. Uh, we can start with the, that. And then uh, here I'm going to grab uh, maybe this face. Shift D, duplicate this one, move it to here. And I am streaming. Yep, that's right. Just check in. So E to extrude this one. And here's another important thing. Let's do a little recap for all you modelers out here. If you needed to restart a reboot and get started again, then uh, see this as a little getting started tutorial and a reminder. So what you want to do here is uh, in the drop down, you want to have back face culling because I could have tricked myself now thinking that I did this perfectly fine, but it's perfectly not fine. It's inverted. And you don't really want to have inverted because when you import it into a game engine, you uh, will see the insides on the outside and the outsides on the inside. No good at all. So make sure that you do yourself a favor, drop down here, back face culling on, then you'll spot these mistakes. You could either extrude it in the other way then to fix it, but if you've been so bad that you actually decided to uh, be lazy and not fix it, you can do it afterwards. L to select the linked here, shift N, and that'll flip the normals. You can also do here, you can do Alt N and do recalculate outside. Sometimes that helps as well if it's a little bit more complicated. So, <clears throat> all right. So let's uh, put uh, something here. And uh, this is really good because I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to be doing a lot of building modeling again in just a moment. So I need to get back into the vibe here now. I'm going to be spending probably another, I'm guessing about 40 hour, hours modeling buildings now for a project. So it's pretty cool. Neo Nexus, if anyone's heard about it. <clears throat> and uh, let's go uh, E to extrude there. So here we got a second floor, and I'm going to do Shift D again, scale this one down a bit. Let's bring it up. Maybe we'll put something like that. We did um, a, what was it? Not a cyberpunk. It was a steampunk uh, clock tower a while back. That was pretty cool. So you're wondering what I'm doing. I'm just extruding some boxes here, of course. So now we'll uh, make uh, a window, and instead of in indenting all the windows, I'm going to make them a little bit more modular and a little bit easier to take care of. So I'll shift D to duplicate that one, move it down. And again, this is just how I quickly resize stuff so I know roughly what this is. G, Z, and one point, maybe two meters tall. And then I grab this whole thing and then I do G, Z, one point, maybe two meters. So this is roughly the si height I want to have my windows on. No science there. Scale X, well, there's a bit of science, because uh, if they were up here, no one would be able to look out through them. Unless you're super tall, maybe the, like an alien thing. <clears throat> so I'm going to do E to extrude here. And as I said, instead of doing a lot of uh, intrusions like this, uh, like control, uh, so normally I'd maybe do this, uh, I to inset and scale, and then e to, e to extrude. This is pretty good, of course, if you want that look to, to make them go in. So I do that quite often too, but here's another one that you could do. And that's that you do these little exterior windows instead. But when you insert these or like when you uh, extrude them inwards, so there should be a word for in extrude inwards. It should be intrude. Maybe that is actually the actual word. So don't go through all the wall because then you lose that effect. Just go pretty near it. And then now we can do G and then cyberpunky stuff always. You either have to have cyan windows like this or you have to have pink windows. Or sometimes if you're lame, you could go for uh, for for like a warm, like natural color. But we're not lame, so we're going to go for like... And uh, I'm a guy, but I can still do pink colors because uh, if uh, anyone grew up in the CGA days, cyan and, and pink are actually the two coolers. Uh, colors and not only are they the they, the two coolest colors, they were the only colors that existed in CGA, unless you wanted the black or white, of course, which uh, debatedly is not a color. It's just either full on all the colors in the world or none. So could intrude it further and boolean subtract it? Yeah, I could do that. But what I don't like about that is uh, if you, I, I do a lot of modular buildings, and. I like to keep it so I can actually just like cheat a lot like this. So you can create these windows without getting a lot of geometry. Otherwise, imagine if I boolean this, it'll be like intruding and it'll be fixed there. So what if I wanted to remove or randomly add and remove some windows? So to get this uh, a bit more cybery, like windows that just are plain like that, uh, they look all right in a dark scene like this because they light up pretty cool like that. But you could do some maybe some E to extrude there. And then we could grab these two. <coughs> 
and then all T extra long face normals. And it makes no sense to have like uh, a thing going out here, I guess, because then like the water would land on it. But let's do it a little bit sci fi here. E to extrude. And then let's do like a little thing here at the top. E to extrude. We'll grab these. So energetic music in the background now. Hope it's not too loud, actually. Alley Cat. I remember that game. Well, I don't actually remember it. I remember the name, but I don't remember what it did. And I don't think I played it very much. So, E to extrude, scale, X. So, scale on the Y axis, and here we go. So, to get something like this, again, like, it's just to get a little bit of features there. And then you could do, in the future, everything, like, has got a lot of panels and stuff. So, this is a tip if you want to model stuff like this. Just do something that makes no sense, really. Let's say that this is um, E. As long as there's, like, some features there, it adds a little bit to the to the details, so we'll see a little bit more later on. Maybe we should make this a different color, actually. L, L to get the link here. B, and make that into, like, uh, a bit darker. Should it be darker? No. Oh, we've got an issue there with the light, but that's okay. It's when you zoom in close, I think. So, all right. So just grab grab a few things. Maybe we'll do like a, a vent thing here at the top as well. So I'll do Shift E to duplicate, Scale, Scale X, and E to extrude. And let's move this in. L to select the link to move it in. And another tip here as well, don't uh, try to do everything out of the same object. A, a lot of stuff when I modeled it, I tried to make everything like the same literal object like this. I'd extrude this one and like if I wanted to extrude, I'll maybe inset it and drag it out. But there's no point to do that, really, I'd say. Uh, it's a better bet to just like Shift D to duplicate that face, have it go in a little bit and extrude it, because then it just becomes a lot fewer polygons and simpler to manage. <clears throat> and if you're going to do... I've done some renders where I've got like thousands of buildings of these type of buildings, but with a lot more detail. And when you, even when you link instantiate those, because uh, for some reason, like... For some reason, Unreal Engine 5 can do it in real time, but Blender actually starts to struggle for me when I did, uh, like, 10,000 buildings. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm gonna keep... I'm gonna look in the chat a little bit, but let's uh, go for it. So, when, once you've got... Uh, oh yeah, and another thing, to make the windows look a little bit more interesting, sometimes I do Shift D to duplicate it, move it in, and E to extrude it, and L, again, this is a separate one, and Maybe I'll make it a little bit less uh, like this. Uh, some less, or uh, 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 if I can find the word, emission on it. Just adds a little bit of a feature to it. It looks like uh, some weird curtains. Whoever would have curtains, I don't know. In in the future, I'm sure sure that doesn't exist. So <clears throat> it looks a bit lame like this one, but it's everything comes down to the lighting here. That's what makes it work. I think that's what makes it work. So, and usually I model a lot of stuff in the same object, but for this one, I'd probably go P and separate this into a new selection. And then I right click and do set origin or geometry to, or, uh, let's see, origin to center of the surface there or something. And then we'll rename this one called window. So now we have a window and I could do, okay, I missed to link that one apparently. So L, P to separate that one. Shift select these, Control J to join them, and now we've got a window there. So now we could just do. Sh uh, I could do Shift D to duplicate it, but a better option here is Alt D, and then do X and Alt D. The good thing about this one is a linked copy now again. So if you don't know what a linked copy is, you will do in just a moment. Because if I wanted to change something on the window and make it happen on all the windows, I could do Shift D E to extrude that one. And it works like this. So it's pretty cool. The downside is, uh, let's say I wanted to make uh, this curtain a little bit lower. Then it would affect all the windows. So in that case, you can right click on it and do uh, convert, I think, to... No, nope, apparently not. Make individual user I'm looking for. I don't know what the hotkey is. Make individual... Individual. Uh -huh. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. <clears throat> Can someone remind me in the chat how you 
get rid of the linked. So I thought it was uh, convert to single user object. Oh, was it there? Let's read single user. Make single user object. Yep, there we go. That's probably an easier way to do it. Thanks, uh, space crawler. Thanks. Appreciate it. You knew it. Uh, and then you could alter afterwards, but then you lose the ability, the niceness of having like that feature that we we're talking about. Okay, and for some reason, make single user object and data. There we go. Okay. Apparently. <clears throat> so uh, let's add uh, in the future. Uh, well, we should make an entrance here anyway. So let's go this one. Move it, and again, we don't have to be too perfect, so let's do shift. I'm actually going to do shift D anyway now, because I want to be able to change those uh, slightly. So we can do that. So we've got that there. Let's make an entrance here. And to this one, I'm actually going to in like make it inwards a little bit. So control R, control R to loop cut these. Control R to loop cut here. And again, I usually do like this, I'll move it down. And I recommend here having the snapping off into vertex. Because if I hold the control key now, I can snap it down to there and then press GZ 2.5 maybe. 2.8. And then I know roughly what height that is. We'll bring it up a little bit from the ground as well. And then we do E to extrude here. And to do doors here, I could do... I'll just do like a little entrance thing here. So I to inset. E to extrude. And then here I'm going to grab and just make it pink as well then. There we go. And then I'm going to do some framing stuff. So I'm going to grab this face here, Shift D to duplicate it, move it into there, bring it in, E to extrude, L to select the link here and go darker. And maybe we'll create some features here. So Shift D X. And then we'll do L L, oop, L L Shift D X. And it, again, it doesn't have to be precise or anything. And I might even stick one at the top here. So shift D and then G Z 2.2 meters up. Okay, go down a little bit. E to extrude that on. And okay, and I want to move this a little bit to the side actually. L. L. And to make it look like a door, I'll grab that face. Shift D to duplicate it. And then maybe roughly one meter above the ground. G, Z, one meter. Scale X and E to extrude. <clears throat> and L to select the linked. Let's make that black. And then we'll do Shift D to extrude that on. And that could be good enough. And to get in, you'd probably have a, like some sort of a door panel in the future. So again, we borrow a face here. That one, shift D to duplicate it, bring it down to there roughly, G, Z, one meter up again, so we know roughly, but we'll bring it down so even short people can, uh, unlike myself, I'm tall, so I should really have mine up here somewhere, but let's make it accessible to everyone here. E to extrude, and this panel, of course, if I would have had blue windows, I would have made this panel uh, pink, but since I've got pink windows, I'm going to make that panel blue. There we go. And then uh, in the future as well, you have to see who you're talking to. Control R, I'm going to add some unnecessary geometry here, probably just so I can E to insert that one. We'll put like a blue screen there as well. Not of death, a blue screen of death. No good. So, all right, I'm going to take a little tiny uh, moment here and check out the chat. I don't know if I'm missing. I'm missing all the super chats. I must have missed all the super chats that came through. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, maybe there were none, actually. That's okay. Uh, all right, I'm going to actually go full screen while I talk here. And then I'm going to forget to go back to small sc or like uh, screen cap. So let's have a look in the chat here. What are you guys saying? <clears throat> uh, Skybox. Whoa, how far back did I scroll? Uh, I, I won't have time to read too long. I'll look for stuff that's got at. It's 7.31 for PM. Thanks, Mia, for clearing that out. That was about nine minutes ago. We've got desk kitten. If you at me, at Infensia, I'll be able to see your direct questions a little bit better. So white plus color, color palettes. Okay, so let's have a look. Desk kitten says, so white plus color colors in the palette are the color with more than one value of brightness. 
uh, I don't know if I understood that qu uh, question correctly, but more than one value of brightness that is uh, here. It's important that you multiply that one. So in the shading tab, you can see that I drag these in, and if I were to place uh, it all the way to the left here, like I've done in the windows, it plugs that color in, but I multiply it by 20. That's the important thing to get the glow. And then you have to have, uh, I've also got the glare uh, filter, or do I? I've got some compositing here. I've got some extra glare here in my compositing here. So I've got the image and the ambient occlusion, mix that, got glare, and that affects uh, the outcome. All right, let's have a look. <clears throat> We've got uh, high star as well. Hi, I've, I've got a different question. What do you think about Visual Studio 2022? I don't know, actually. I don't even know what version of Visual Studio I'm running at the moment. I think I'm st I was still on 2019. But I like Visual Studio. It's a very good ID. I like to, uh, all this clever stuff that it's got in it. All right, we've got... Uh, Brups Infensia, what is the name of the G key command? Uh, I don't know if it's grab for move, like G to grab it, I usually say. So, I don't know, G is just move it. Uh, Christian Hoff, Infensia. Oh, I did it again. I showed my ugly face again instead of showing the screen. How can I forget to just click there and then go back? I need an, an assistant, a streaming assistant that can do my toggling here. All right, so what I was trying to say is that in the compositing, I've set, said it before, so I've got the ambient occlusion and image, multiply those, and I bring it into a glare node to get extra glow. And then I was saying here in the shading that I plug the, this uh, texture here into my emission, and it's this multiplier that's important. So it goes beyond one in the value. That was this simple question I was gonna try to answer. All right, so let's bring it back in. If anyone has any more questions, uh, do at Infensia so I can see them a little bit easier. And let's go back now to the stream. Uh, here we go. And I think here's a thing I do sometimes. Sometimes I forget, I click on a different texture like this one. I clicked on the emission texture now. That's what, because I noticed that everything was uh, darker here than when I left it. And it's uh, the Blender viewport here, if you drop down and do texture, it actually shows whichever is the active texture here. So with a trained eye, I noticed that it wasn't gray anymore, it was black. So now it looks the way I was used to. <clears throat> All right, so remember, if it's a question about how I see some stuff about Unity here and stuff, but do at Infensia if you're asking me so I can spot them. Otherwise, I'll probably spend too much time just sitting there reading. All right, let's put a vending machine here. Am I showing my stream? I am. That's good. Okay, we've got a question. Major Laser. Laser. I like your name. Major Laser. Sounds like laser. Laser is cool. Hey, Infensia, did you learn modeling all by yourself? And are you an employee at a great company or are you a freelancer? Those are some great questions. I learned all my modeling all by myself, all uh, on my own here down in the basement and uh, upstairs before I got demoted down into my own basement. So I just uh, spent a lot of time modeling stuff for quirky little uh, prototypes and silly games that I made. And then uh, your second part, uh, and everything, uh, like some YouTubing of course, but most of it is just trial and error and repeating. 10 minute modeling challenge was my main source of uh, learning actually, uh, like to get the speed and, and stuff up for repetitiveness. And uh, if I'm an employee, I'm actually working as a uh, full-time indie developer right now, since two and a half years ago, because before that I worked as, uh, I'm gonna show my face again. So before uh, this, uh, for 20 years, I worked as a, uh, like an IT consultant and IT security consultant uh, for all my time. And then I did Infensia stuff in my step air time for like 20 years. But then I, I left uh, that company or like uh, as being a consultant and I became a full-time indie developer and we're making Line War. So check out linewar.com. It's coming to Steam very shortly. So pre please wishlist uh, Line War at Steam search it up it's going to be super cool we're really excited to release that game so that's my full-time job and to answer what i'm doing there i'm doing 3d modeling all the uh, like the objects of course in the world and stuff i'm doing programming uh, c sharp stuff i'm doing a lot of the unity stuff procedural world generation i do a lot of animation sound music 
uh, web development. Uh, I do Steam integration stuff sometimes. I do uh, a lot of user interface stuff. I do, um, um, yeah, I, most of the things that are in the front end and shown to the player. That's my job. And my coworker Christian, who's a, a really good developer, he's got the main responsibility to do all the hardcore, uh, like architecture of the whole project. He does a lot of the, well, all the AI programming. He does uh, the command management system, the net, net code and things like that. So that's my full-time job. And then I do uh, freelancing on top of that. And uh, I do freelancing both in terms of uh, companies that need some modeling. And uh, I realized that I got a lot of requests actually starting to do my YouTube channel. <clears throat> so that opened up more doors when it came to modeling than anything else that I'd done before. So with the U-Team came those who managed to reach me because I, I'm a bit difficult to get a hold of because I've got notifications everywhere and like 13,000 mails and a bad, bad conscience. So that's um, um, why it's difficult to get a hold of me because uh, I need an, some help with that, I think. Uh, it's because I, I like I try to take on as much as I can, but sometimes I get a little bit too much. But I do some freelancing to answer that, and that's to pay the bills because we've been developing Lime War for three years without uh, any income from that game whatsoever, only expenses. So I've done some freelancing both in terms of uh, freelance modeling and for some NFT projects that I actually think is really cool because it's uh, enabling artists to actually model stuff and have the art sold, which I think is super cool. So uh, it's been really a savior for me as a uh, uh, indie developer. So that was uh, the question. And uh, we had a question from uh, Mohammed as well. I say your last name because I can pronounce it <laughs> if that's your last name. And uh, can you do Unity script tutorial? Yeah, uh, check out. I've got some scripting tutorials. I've realized that trying to do those live is super difficult because it's um, and modeling is quite simple because you could just like um, go with the flow and model a little bit. Programming requires you to have much more focus on exactly what you're doing. And I usually just Google a lot when I do my development. I, I like look in the API references all the time, and I, I do a lot of stuff um, in that sense. So maybe, but check out my Unity tutorials because they cover a little bit of basic scripting at least. So uh, let's uh, bring back the screen here. So we got oh Tierox, thank you. Hey, today marks the 270th day I've been learning Swedish. It's going badly. <laughs> Who more do we do? Well. You did actually manage to convey a message there. So 270 day, uh, it depends on how much you've been studying it, but I hope you're doing uh, good. Thanks a lot for your super chat, very much appreciated. And keep up the Swedish practice. I have no idea why you want to learn Swedish, but maybe it's, uh, if you want to speak to 10 million out of 10 billion people, then it's a good choice. Uh, maybe you got a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what. Uh, so maybe there's a good reason. My wife is English, so that's why. I was going to say that's why I speak English, but it's not why, because I speak English, because everyone needs to be able to speak English who is um, in the computer world. All right, let's check out. Uh, XM Lyrics, do you like voxel art? I actually really like voxel art, but I haven't really done much of it. I like pixel art, I like low poly art, so how can you not like uh, voxel art? Super cool stuff. And we've got, uh, <clears throat> uh, do all nodes work in Unity when you import or do you need extra adjustment for emissions? Well, I'd say hardly any nodes work, as far as I know. I always create my own Unity materials when I import it. So I just make sure that I create my own text, uh, my own material in Unity, and I have the base color texture as the albedo map, and then I bring in my emissions texture as the emission map, and then I have my own shader there. And usually I boost the emission there as well. And all the other stuff, I try to not uh, do a lot of uh, like PBR type of fancy materials. That's another thing where I like low poly so much because it's so basic, the materials. Uh, all right, let's have a look. Uh, uh, Christian Hoff, what work of yours are you most happy with? I struggle with getting happy with my creations. It's a very good question. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I don't like to. And uh, I think my favorite 3D model that I did on any of my streams might have been the spaceship that I did for episode 100. I'm actually really happy with the, that starship, how it turned out. thought uh, in the time frame of, of uh, 100 minutes, I was really happy with that. I'm also happy with all the units that I created for Lion War. Um, even though they're super basic, they, they work really well, I think, in the game. They're crisp and clean and easy to recognize and stuff, so I like that. Uh, a lot of my 10-minute modeling challenge uh, build, builds I'm not happy with, but then I've got the excuse of it, them only taking 10 minutes, so I forgive myself a little bit on that. So. Thanks, DJ Peterson, for uh, wishlisting Line War. 
everyone who can wish this line more will do me a huge favor. And Christian, we're really needing uh, as much exposure as uh, you can, as we can get them. Oh, I've got a lot of ad questions here. So major, um, so all, all right, thanks, Infancy. So you're welcome there. Uh, Tanner, Eminent, uh, which platform do you use to sell NFTs? Uh, they're sold on Solana. So I like that blockchain a lot because uh, for everyone who hates uh, NFTs because of the environment impact, well, Solana doesn't really have any environment impact because it's not proof of work. It's proof of stake. So that's pretty good. <clears throat> and I like that it's super cheap to do the uh, the transactions there too. And they're also very fast in comparison to Ethereum and stuff. So let's see, uh, Ivano Mucci. Hi, man. Big fan from Brazil here. Just saw your video about Unity 2021 URP. Do you... <laughs> Do you still mad at Unity for the URP pipeline and Shader Graph? Well, I sort of am because it's so much simpler the way it was in the original 3D pipeline. So I don't know why they complicate it a little bit, but I am trying and trying and trying to warm up a little bit to it. So in the Shader Graph, I managed to get, uh, uh, surprisingly enough, uh, in a couple of videos ago with the Cavity Shader, I did that in Shader Graph and URP. So I think I'll get around to it, but I don't know why they complicate stuff with making so many different options available all the time. I guess it's the flexibility, but with that comes some some problems. And also don't like the the interface for some reason of the spaghetti machine of uh, Shader Graph. I don't know why it, it feels like uh, I can have like only a few nodes visible. Like when you look in uh, here, it, it, it feels like all the nodes and everything is like, I don't know, it doesn't take up that much space in Shader Graph. It feels like to see what is in a node, it's like, I don't know, 10 times bigger or something. I don't know why. <clears throat> oh, okay, Jen Abbott creates, uh, the art in Lineware is really beautiful, thanks. I'm really happy with the way it's starting to turn out now. We've got a new trailer coming uh, shortly as well. And it was meant to be prototype art in the beginning, and then it sort of grew on me, and I have got, got some crazy, like it's evolved through the time. So in every other sprint or something, I do some visual changes, and when you compare Lineware the way it looked two years ago to now, it's basically the same units, but it looks totally different. So I'm really happy the way that turned out. All right, so we got, sorry, I'm gonna ask to uh, like check out some more questions. Let's go full screen again. So we can, uh, so I was gonna say, so I can see myself, or well, you can see me, or you can look away, close your eyes if you just wanna hear the voice. <laughs> so uh, Tanner again, uh, we've got in fancy, I really find myself in the middle of choosing which path to go most, modeling or programming. Art is more fun sometimes than programming. How do you decide to go on modeling? Well, I do both, I do a lot. My days are like, I don't know, some days are 100% modeling and zero programming. Some days are 100% programming and zero modeling. Some days I do sound effects all day. Some days I do music all day. Sometimes I do web development or I do Linux uh, auto scaling for server templates. I do Python scripting in Blender and I do Python scripting to process, uh, to automate video creations and I do all sorts of things. So what, here's one of the big biggest tips that I've got, maybe. Because in the beginning, I really got frustrated, especially when I was younger. Like, why can I not stick to one thing? And then I tried to force myself to do one thing. So whether it was programming, I thought, okay, I'm gonna drop everything else. It's programming, I should become really good at that. And I got miserable instead, and I didn't ended up trying to do stuff that um, I didn't like and stuff. So in the end, and it took me maybe a couple of years, and I'd go by this all the time now, I called it waves of creativity. So when I hit a wave <laughs> of uh, doing development, I really like programming, I try to maximize it. I enjoy it and I can spend like day and night and I don't even want to go to sleep. And I do a lot of programming and uh, it's fun. I get a lot of stuff out of it at the end. And then I'll have a wave like that, that lasts maybe one, two weeks and that, that one fades. And then I start to get into modeling again, and then I'll do, I'll utilize that wave of creativity that came from modeling. So then I do like one or two weeks of super lot modeling. And I do like for those NFT projects or for the game and for just for videos or anything like that. I do, I just like, I get totally involved into that and I absolutely love it. So I definitely could not pick one and I'd probably get better at something and become an expert at something if I stuck to one thing, but I don't think I would like it so much. I really like being able to do a lot of things, um, uh, a, a little thing of, a little, how do you say it? I like to be able to do a little, a little bit about everything. Hmm. Oh well, you get the point anyway. Uh, I'd rather have <laughs> a lot of knowledge in a, no, I'll, 
<laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. I'd rather have a little knowledge with a lot of things than a lot, 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 a lot of knowledge in one thing. Because it also helps me, so when I'm working either helping out uh, different projects to do things, uh, I usually, I can utilize the scripting thing into the Blender or I can use utilize it into texturing and uh, in the game development it helps me a lot. So my long advice there is to try to do the stuff that you like and uh, don't force yourself to pick one of them. Do it. Um, Alright, sorry about that. Long, uh, long, uh, confusing thing here. <clears throat> so we got uh, Fallstorm Studios. Uh, could you maybe do a tutorial on how to make a low poly wolf boy character? Oh, yeah, I don't even know if I could do that. So I could uh, maybe think about it. I did some animals, but again, super low poly stuff. Don't know if uh, it'll be so useful, but I could think about it. <laughs> that doesn't help you if I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I've promised uh, way too many things in the past. Sorry, let's have a look. Kafenovich. Could you do a vid on the changes and reasons behind them uh, for the line war units? That would be interesting. I haven't done a lot of changes on the units themselves. The, all the structures went through an iteration of upgrades. So I'm actually going to bring, uh, maybe I'll bring just a screenshot up so people can see here um, what I'm talking about. And I'm actually going to switch them before I do that to the stream window. And then let's go grab uh, my drives are a disaster here. So we've got, here we go, line more capture. My files are all over the place. I have a nice screenshots folder here somewhere. Let's see. Why is it difficult to think when you're streaming? It's like, I, I need to know where these things are, I'm thinking, and then I don't know where they are. So. Let's go grab, I know where I have a copy of them. So, can grab those. Line War. I'm really excited about this game, actually. I'm so, this is the project that I've stuck to the most and longest to, to actually do. So here are some screenshots. And I actually replaced the units with textured ones, high, uh, a lot more textured. And they lost visual quality, which was quite interesting, I thought. They they became more of a smudgy little, uh, uh, like, I don't know, you couldn't really distinguish them so well. So the low poly look, not only does it bring performance, it actually helps a lot when you're zoomed out like this. But I'd probably have to do, if you if you should be able to zoom into the game a lot more, then we probably need to do it so that the, uh, uh, so that they, like, replace with a higher LOD version, of course. But for... For this uh, scale, it works really, really good for the game, it's, and it becomes really easy to to spot them in comparison. These were actually some old screenshots. Why did I do them? Let's unzip this one instead, because we replaced all the trees not long ago. <clears throat> Let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, okay, I'm looking at myself now here for some stupid reason media screenshots Okay, I think I'm working in a different branch or something because I must have checked them in that's the downside with get when you check something in and You check out the test branch then it just replaces all this stuff. So never mind those were pretty similar to what it looks like anyway Let's uh, check out the history here are you planning to make games for the Brackies Game Jam? No, unfortunately not. Um, I'm just barely struggling to keep up to uh, ma uh, participate in Ludum Dares at the moment. So I probably won't be able to do uh, Once you said to think to model a soldier in 10 minutes, in according to my suggestion. Even I said my brother... I'm trying to think. Did I model a soldier? Did I say I was going to? I probably said that, that I was going to consider a lot of things, actually. <laughs> Are you using... Dots. No, maxed out. We're not using dots because of a very good reason. It's not actually out yet. And they even pulled the support of the, the data-oriented technology stack, dots. So it doesn't even work in Unity 2022. And for, so, uh, for some reason, the, they paused like the public stuff. They've hidden it. You can't really download it unless you do like a 
you go into the archives and use the old version of Unity and stuff. So, and then they might release one sometimes this year, unless you've heard any news. And then it's still going to be beta, and it might come next uh, uh, next year if we're lucky. But I'm not so convinced we need it. All right, <clears throat> let's uh, continue. Sorry about that. That was a long. Uh, digression here so let's uh, go back to this uh, thing i'm gonna put shift d to do am i sh yeah i'm getting the habit now i'm actually looking at the screen so i'm not showing my face <laughs> so e to extrude and maybe we'll do dark here and i'm gonna put a sign here on top so shift d to duplicate that one and e to extrude l to select the length g move it to black and what i'll do here is i'm gonna put a big post here instead and we'll put a sign here. Scale shift Z is good. Uh, scales on all the, the directions exact uh, the Z direction there. So let's put two posts there. And then I'm going to do just shift D to duplicate that one. Scale, bring it out. And E to extrude. L select link, scale Z, shift D, Z, bring it up to there. And here, let's bring out the text tool. And here is a trick as well. If you want to recur look late or <laughs> relocate your cursor here to click anywhere there you want it, right click or shift S, I mean cursor to select it, and now we've got the cursor there. So and then I wanted to add um, shift A, let's do uh, text rotate x minus 90. Okay, minus again because I don't want it there. And then we'll just put welcome here. And for this one Let's go into the modifier. No, okay. I need to go into the text tab here. I'm just concerned that I'm not actually showing what I'm doing here. I can do, I can go into the rendered view. We can model it in here straight away, actually. Hopefully it's not too dark. And here, uh, we can do the extrude here straight away. Welcome. And we could change the font, but I'll just leave it for now. And texture, do I have a, no, I don't have, okay. So for this one, I think I might create a new material and call it Neon. Let's create a link, like a fake user, that one too, <clears throat> just in case. And for this one, let's just uh, see if we can access. We'll do emission. So we'll make it like a red color. And emission strength to make it glow there. Maybe we'll do 20. So there we go, like a little welcome sign there. And then another thing that looks pretty good is uh, if if you don't get enough light from uh, from the emission there, then here could be a good thing to put an extra light. So Shift S, cursor to selected, Shift A, and let's add uh, an area light here. Bring it down. And bring it out and these are really weak by default if you're wondering so but we can boost them a little bit maybe to there and then put like a pink color there as well or red then this way we can get the lighting to look a little bit more welcoming like this and uh, EV supports only 120 lights I'm uh, afraid so but usually that's uh, good enough for uh, for a building of course so uh, yes, I will do more Tanner again, uh, more Unity. Actually, the most successful YouTube video I've got on on YouTube is my Learn Unity tutorial, and uh, it's actually got 1.6 million views now, which is a lot, uh, a very high number for me. So that that one is by far the most successful video that I've done, and it's followed by the Low Poly Modeling Challenge. So I think, even though I said that that was going to be the most basic or longest tutorial I was ever going to make, uh, I think it's time 2022 to upgrade. Uh, I've learned so much about the low poly modeling technique, so I want to try to create a new guide of low poly modeling. So like a, a Blender 3.0 low poly mastering guide. And I want to compress the video so it's a little bit faster for people that are coming back so they can become more proficient with it. And the same for Unity. I'd like to do a new Unity tutorial for Unity 2022 and create a very basic game, a run through in that one. And uh, of course, I'll have to use the, the URP then or some pipeline that is uh, built in and make sure that I utilize uh, like the current th thing. I'm probably not going to use um, the new input system because it's, for new beginners, it's uh, it's very flexible, but it's, it takes a little bit longer and it's a bit too complicated. So we got Ivano uh, Mucci here. How do you keep motivated when you struggle with something and uh, it seems to go on forever? 
that bad. I've got a very good example about that one, Ivano, as well, because I got stuck on a problem. I needed to automate the export from Blender to create uh, uh, 10,000 exported animated characters into FBX files. And uh, I did, uh, I have uh, those animations there. Um, uh, I can show a little screenshot here, for example, of what they look like. So let's see. Uh, let's grab. Okay, it was on my E drive. So if you have a look at these things. Okay, let's go for here. And here. So these characters here. They're all again exported into uh, separate FBX files. And oh, don't know what happened then. It's struggling a bit to play. So uh, it's automated through Python that Blender runs through and uh, exports all of these. And some of the animations, especially, let's see if the nunchuck guy is here somewhere. <clears throat> We've got, uh, let's bring up, I've got, it's 10,000 of these, of course, according to normal standards. <laughs> let's see if I can find. Uh, my what? My player is really struggling to play this video file. Hello. There we go. Shift two. There we go. No, it goes into some weird maximize mode. Let's get, get a smaller collage then with some fewer in. Maybe this one will work better. So some of these animations. So can I spot one of them that has that something that is more animated than, than something else? Yeah, this guy here on the left here is flipping a steak, for example. But maybe there's a better one here. So we've got there's a flip flip steak flipper again. Here we go there. So when I automated the export from uh, Blender with the Python, then animations for other objects like this didn't follow. And I'm not even kidding. I spent, first I spent 20 hours in the Python scripting to figure out what it was that was going wrong because it just blankly ignored those because uh, it converts everything from actions into uh, the this non-linear uh, animation NLA tracks things. And it just did not include that. So your question was uh, how I get through that. And I just uh, took a systematic approach to think, OK, it's probably going to be stable enough. I Googled it didn't help me so much. Uh, and I just kept persistently and started to debug and figure out, OK, I have to do small tests, small iterations to try to figure out what's going. And it was a systematic approach of trying this, that, this, that, and ruling it out one by one. And I knew I had to solve the issue, so it was quite easy to stay motivated because I thought no one else is going to do it for me and I don't have anyone to ask really. <laughs> so I'll just go about it and after about 30 hours total I managed to solve it and it was at one command that had true instead of false. That's how stupid it was in the end. But it wasn't so uh, easy to spot why it would have been that particular flag that did it. So that was a huge uh, thing. But then uh, sometimes I switch to different things. So if I get really, really uh, fed up with something and I don't have time to fix it, then sometimes I, I switch to something else for a while just so I can recharge my batteries a little bit. Uh, so we got, uh, have you tried go dot? Go -da. I'm not going to say it properly. Go dot. Not yet. I will do that. So uh, it was awesome. Would you suggest learning Blender before Unity or both at the same time? Both at the same time, I'd say, Matthew. I'd say do a bit of blending, do a basic, uh, here's a, it's actually the perfect thing to learn together, I'd say. Uh, create something in in Unity, a very, very, very basic project, uh, like a space top-down, space war type of shooter thing. And then in Blender, model the most basic spaceship you can even imagine. And check out my first episode of the 10-minute modeling challenge or my modular spaceship, and then do a little bit of both, and I think you'll enjoy it a lot. Jeffrey Bell, uh, those characters are so cool. Are you planning to release them? Well, this is my, I was going to say my pet project. Uh, 
but uh, this is going to be my own. Uh, I'm learning how the uh, NFT stuff works, so this has been my learning project to to do uh, that whole journey. So it's not going to be for everyone, only the ones who want to uh, to get involved in the NFT space. And I understand that that's not everyone, of course. So, but it's. Uh, uh, been a really really fun project. It's uh, what I like about it is actually that it brings together a few things. Like so, I'm I'm decent at programming, decent at modeling, decent at scripting, and like finding problems to uh, like finding solutions to problems, and being able to create the animations and the characters. I've seen this as a perfect learning project to to automate it so I can generate like all of these ten thousand characters. And then I want to help others who want to be able to develop games in that space. So I'm, I'm planning a big thing where it's actually going to be used for game development stuff in the Discord at some point that, um, that I can fund a little bit to help other people that want to learn how to develop in that space. So that's my plan for there. So I'm really driven on that one. It's going to be more info coming maybe in a, a couple of weeks. So finalizing things there. <clears throat> All right. Uh, do you have uh, any of your Python scripts for Blender automations published somewhere, it could be really interesting to read. Uh, Jacob, not yet, but I, I've learned a lot about it. And my my approach to programming is uh, quite hack and slashy. I need to solve the problem. So I don't really over obsess over how quality or how good the, the code structure is. And that's, uh, I come back again to the way we, I'll put on full screen. So again, as I mentioned with Line War, it's very good that Christian is doing all the backend and architecture because it's very important for a big project like that, especially it's multiplayer, it's got a lot of AI, and if you touch something, it might break down the line. And I'm not the best person to create that type of code, but he is much better than me. But what I do then instead is I produce a lot of stuff that consumes the stuff that he does. So when I create a, a structure or a, a, a striker that fires off the missiles, or I do like the smoke trails, I do simple programming to do a lot of the, the front end stuff, then it's not really that problematic if, uh, if it's not uh, the most beautiful piece of code you've ever seen, because it just needs to solve the problem. And for the Python scripting, I just had a goal that I know what I needed to do. And I, my approach is a lot that I, I just uh, Google the stuff, I get snippets, and I try stuff, and I have a simple scene in Blender. I automate it and I export it, and I learn a lot from that one. So <clears throat> at some point, I'm definitely going to take everything that I've learned, and I wanted to create some, some help for people that want to do a lot of automation in Blender as well, because not only for the type of projects that I'm doing, but when you do stuff uh, to build your own little extensions to help with animation exports, or uh, for example, I. Um, to export, I've done some simple plugins where it bulk exports everything. So instead of having to go and export like things individually, uh, you can create yourself like little helper things for Blender, and everything is really accessible through that API. So I definitely want to create some some assistance and some help for everyone there to make the use out of that one. All right, so let's go back to the modeling now. Sorry about that digression there. So we're at. Uh, been streaming for one hour and fifteen minutes so far, but let's uh, and I have. So I must be doing so much talking because I don't really have that much to show for it. Let's put um, a big uh, air, air conditioning unit here. This is going to be a massive thing. So E to extrude. And I think I need to boost the colors a little bit here, actually. Let's go. Let's boost that one and boost this one. The red light too here. We can see it a little bit better. There we go. And here, let's put uh, eye to inset. And here's my little trick that I, I like to tell everyone. I do right click, subdivide, and then make sure that you have this uh, enabled, of course. It's something there, circle from loop tools. Scale it down, E to extrude, and now we've got ourselves like a little ventilation thing going here. So then we can do S to scale this one down, or we won't do that yet. Actually, I'll do I to inset again. And how should we do it? E to extrude, S to scale, and then we'll pick every other here. E to extrude that, and then we'll put like a pink color there with emission, of course. And it creates this uh, cool looking, uh, it's um, an air conditioning unit from the future. Shift E to duplicate this one. E to extrude, and then here we don't have to be crazy about like what it is. Just make some stuff that looks like it's like attached like this. E to extrude, S to scale. Maybe we'll put a pipe here. Shift E to duplicate. 
And same thing, I usually do my pipes like this. Right click, subdivide, circle, scale it down, <clears throat> bring it down, E to extrude. And here, here's how I do my bends. I pick that vertex, Shift S, cursor to selected. And then I extrude that one on the Y axis into here. Shift S, cursor to selected. And all the, I only did that to get the vertex and my 3D cursor here, because then now I delete the vertex. Then I can select this, and I've got this one perfectly positioned now, so I can use this spin tool. And we want to change this one so it spins on the x-axis. And then hold the control key to snap it, and 90 degrees, and E to extrude. So I do a lot of my low-poly piping work like this. I find it to be quite good. And then by the time I've, I've created a few of them, maybe we'll make it a bit brighter, should it be a bit red? Some desaturated red color here. And then I can just shift D to duplicate, lock it on the x-axis, and there we go. And <clears throat> here, let's put uh, another thing I like to do a lot on these type of buildings is like uh, satellite dishes and stuff. So let's make one of them too. I use the same approach usually, or do I? Let's see, shift D to duplicate, right click, subdivide, circle. And then here I'll probably scale it up and then I'll do I to inset, bring it down. I to inset, bring it down, and then let's L to select all the linked, Alt E to extrude long face normals, and then we can just do that way. And now I don't actually know if I did it the right way because I don't have, oh yeah, there we go. Um, and here let's go Shift E to duplicate that one, E to extrude, and S to scale, and then E to extrude, S to scale, and then E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, <laughs> E to extrude, S to scale. And of course, Alt select that one and make it emissive red. We want to have like a glowing right light there. Uh, so we could put another edge. Maybe we'll do Alt E, extrude long face normals. And Alt E, extrude long face normals. I don't know what this is. Something new, something different. <laughs> and L to select the linked. And P, separate that into selection. I'm actually going to name this now. Right click and do dish. I am showing what I'm doing. Yeah, that's good. Right click, set origin, mass, center mass, rotate, and then we'll just stick it there. I'm noticing now that it's uh, it could have been a little bit more. We can fix this in post, I was going to say. Oh, proportional. Alto, so it's actually got this little dot in the center. Period, and go to... No, comma, and go local, and then we'll slide this one in. Okay, that wasn't so good, so I'll do G, Y, okay, Z, and then use the scroll wheel, and we'll just reshape it a little bit like this with a proportional editing. So that looks probably a little bit better. And then we can do, I'll just do E to extrude, E to extrude, oh, I accidentally uh, switched it off. E to extrude, S to scale, and then... Here we'll just do, I don't know, you can do anything. This is the nice thing about modeling fictional stuff. It's so much faster because now I just Alt-E to extrude that. I don't know why I would necessarily have to do that. <laughs> do that, Alt-E, extrude long phase normals, and then we can do like, grab these. Alt-E, extrude long phase normals. And there we go. This is some something e to extrude there we go ah oh, comma let's do normal we can slide these down along the normals a little bit more l and g and we'll just push position it i don't know okay i missed apparently the this one there we go <clears throat> so that could be some satellite dish array and Another thing, and I don't really care if it's, to be honest, well, I do. Let's make it sl slightly smaller then, so I do care, apparently. Rotate, because it did look a little bit strange there. Let's do go E to extrude, and maybe we'll bridge these. Right-click and do bridge faces, very useful too. Control R, bring that down to there along that axis, and then we'll do E to extrude, and there, rotate Y, okay, rotate Y, that's Y, E to extrude, 
and I don't know, you took extrude, S to scale. Here's the nice thing, you, you can't really go wrong, you just do something. And here we can put an antenna, and we'll do same thing here. We'll do right click, subdivide, circle, scale it down, and bring it to there maybe. E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, E to extrude, and uh, for some reason again, a little light here. Red, there we go. And shifty, you can never go wrong with duplicating stuff. Everything looks good in arrays and copies of things. So let's put two ones there, of course. So we need uh, more windows and I'll do some a little bit faster here. So we'll do, and I'll use a different approach here than I did down at the bottom. So I'll control R a few here. We'll do those in the indentations that I said I wasn't going to do. Uh, so we'll grab, a f okay, we need some more here. So now I can grab, maybe I'll go two there, one there, oh no. So shift select a few of these. <clears throat> and I to inset, scale Z. And, okay, I wanted to grab this one too. I to inset, scale Z, alt E, extrude long phase normals, and we'll go pink. And we can copy this light source that we had here and shift D to duplicate that one, stick one here. Again, it doesn't need to make perfect sense, but this big window we could do with some extra light looking like it's coming out of here. And scale X, there we go. Okay, a bit awkward scaling there. Not too picky. And <clears throat> we'll do some stuff here. This could be a big metal thing at the top. I'll just speed up a little bit here. So we'll do Control R, loop cut a few times. Control R, loop cut that one. Control R, loop cut. And then here I'm going to grab like this one and just move this one up to there. No, I won't. I'll grab both of these up to there. Grab some random ones here and bring that down to there. And you'll see in a second why I'm doing this. And that one. And now I can start grabbing a few of these and make some sort of panels. So let's grab a few random ones here. So I think this looks quite sci-fi stuff as well. So. so and now when we've got a few of these, I'll do I to inset. And then I'll do 0 0.2 and then Alt S 0 0.2. And that creates these panel looking things that usually the light bounces off pretty cool. And we can do the same thing again, find some more panels. Maybe we'll put some adjacent ones here too. And here, I to inset 0 0.2, Alt S 0 0.2 and Alt S scales it in the direction of the normals there as well. So that's pretty good. And then uh, let's put a big uh, like commercial sign here at the ceiling. Shift D, scale, scale X. Bring it up to here. And let's do E to extrude and make it wide, widescreen, of course. I to inset and E to extrude. And let's make a big blue cyan color panel here. It's like an overexposed advertisement thing, so you don't really see what's on the screen. Shift D, S to scale on the X axis, scale Z, bring it down, E to extrude, and again, simple stuff. Low poly is everyone's best friend, unless you're high poly's best friend. <laughs> would make no sense. Why would you like high poly? Well, of course. I'm only joking, of course. High poly is super cool. I wish I had the patience and skill to do high poly stuff and especially sculpting like that, Jan sculpts and stuff. That would be a dream to be able to do cool stuff like that. But I'll be okay for now doing low poly stuff. I like it too much. E to extrude. So when we've got some, that's a very thick, thick, thick screen for being futuristic. So of course, scale Y, and now suddenly we brought it right into the future. Nice. Okay, so big monitor, and to emphasize that, I'm gonna shift D to duplicate a light source up to here, and bring it here. You can play a lot with light. I think uh, creating just, it doesn't really have to make perfect sense either, you know? It's uh, like, just grab a color here, blue, and suddenly, 
like I know it's not scientifically correct that the light would have been shining like this, but it looks pretty cool when it does. So I'm usually okay. You can even do some cool lighting effects on buildings. Let's do Shift D to duplicate that one. Scale this one. Uh, rotate X 180. Scale Y. Again, stuff like this makes no perfect sense. But sometimes you can get pretty cool effect by doing things like that. So rotate X 180. Especially if you have like a ledge. Let's boost this light a lot. Okay, that doesn't actually at all work like I was thinking. I had to boost it a lot then, like 10,000. Sometimes you can put things like that just to, and then it'd probably be good to put a, a ledge to make it like, um, let's see, let's do it here. So if I grab that face, why can't I edit it? There we go. So I'll do Shift D to duplicate scale on the Z axis. Alt E extrude long face normals. And then maybe I'll do like a stripe here. So I'll do Control R loop cut that one. And then we'll try to do underneath here too. Control R. I'll, I'll Alt and loop select or ring select or whichever one that one is. If I can hit it there and Shift and Alt there. And then let's make a. G, let's change that to a cyan color too, or something. There. Then you can start to create pretty, like, that light in combination with that type of, um, let's move this down slightly. Okay, I think if I render it, it looks a little bit better. You could even flip it. Let's flip it. Rotate X. Okay. Accidentally nearly deleted it. Rotate X180. There we go. Stuff like that could be cool to get that light source to light it up. Maybe it's too bright now. So let's... 2000. There we go. So, and another cool thing to do is uh, some fictional uh, stuff here, of course. So shift space, uh, shift D to duplicate it, right click, subdivide, circle, scale it down, and E to extrude, shift D, and then E to extrude, and check this out now. A lot of checking out to do here. So L, Shift D, again, sci-fi stuff. This could work for. I don't know what it would be, but it's some sort of a, like strong beams here. Should we make them red? Glowy red. There we go. And L, L, this could be black instead. There. And then again, what did I say? Stuff that's copied um, usually looks cool when they're together. So let's copy this one. Shift D, Y to there, and then Shift R, make four of those. And then I have no idea what this is, by the way, but it looks pretty cool. E to extrude. So those uh, beamy lights there could be something. And we could do something that comes out from the wall there, maybe. E to extrude. E to extrude. S to scale, E to extrude, E to extrude. Usually when you have lighting from the side as well, just slight bevels and things like this looks pretty cool. And you could even go for the bevel. So if I if I select like these, for example, edges, you could press Control B and bevel those. I do that sometimes too. For some extra, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And then oh, more things to do. Just select the random stuff, I to inset, E to extrude. It doesn't have to make sense. Change it to some light. There, strong light apparently. And again, absolutely makes no sense here. But let's let's go scale Z and put some sort of a big thing here. E to extrude that on. Bring that down. And sometimes you can even bevel the whole thing. I know it's not really optimal, but Control B when everything is selected there. And again. You have to, it's a quiz now. What looks cool when you do? It's when you do repetition. So Shift X here and Control. Okay, I did it wrong. So Shift D to duplicate it. Press X to slide on the X axis and then Shift R does the same operation again. Saves you some time. And then we can copy this whole thing. Shift D to duplicate that. Rotate Z 90. 
maybe scale them on the what, x axis. Repetition, remember? Looks pretty good when you rep repeat it like that. Makes it more interesting. <clears throat> and let's say you wanted to put a vending machine here. Borrow a face off the wall. Shift D to duplicate. Scale X. Am I streaming? Yeah, I hope so. Uh, scale Z, E to extrude, and E to extrude, S to scale. Control R here. Control R there. Uh, shift Control R here. Grab a few of these. And I do have transparency here too, but it's not actually in this material setup and I've been streaming. Oh yeah, I do actually. So let's do that one instead. I'll do, uh, I'll delete these, delete the faces, and then I'll select these and press F to fill it. And then I click on that one, F to fill and F to fill. And then here I'll do, let's see, how should I do this? I'll control R to duplicate that one, bring this in. I don't know what type of vending machine this is, but never mind. And then I'll grab these. I'll borrow these. Shift D to duplicate. Find find clever ways to make shortcuts. You don't have to model all that glass. I'll just did it like that instead. Scale Z. And here, make it thicker, Alt T, extra long face normals, because I'm gonna make this transparent now. So I'll have to do P. And I do have a transparent material set up here. So I'm gonna grab that one, transparent. And if you wanted to see what that was like, I haven't saved this, by the way. I should really save, uh, should I press Control S? No, let's live on the edge. I trust Blender 3.0. Uh, so I think I have transparent. Oh yeah, I, it's a bit of a fake transparency here where it mixes it into a transparent BSDF and I can control the slider how transparent it should be. And in my UV editing here, let's put... It's difficult to see that it's transparent here. Uh, the coloring should still work, so let's go for a blue color. Like there, not emissive. But And then let's stick a really strong light source in here. I'll do Shift D to duplicate it, and you can convert uh, an area light. Oh, that looks pretty cool. I like stuff like that when you play with the light. I'm actually going to keep the light there and create a little thing for it too. You could create a fake uh, light source here, shift D, E to extrude, and just pretend that that's, this has got like a light thing in it. Uh, so let's do that, E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, bring that in there. And then we can fake, okay, E to extrude, bring that in. If you're struggling with motivation, I've spoke about this before, just model something that makes you happy. Find something that you like. For some reason, sci-fi stuff, and I think it's, again, because it's so simple to not get it wrong, because there doesn't even exist to begin with, so everything you do is wrong, pretty much. So go for it. Um, find something that you enjoy doing and just spend some time doing it. E to extrude, and I'm going to bring that one to an emissive. Now we've combined like the emission with this light source there. And again, it doesn't have to make perfectly scientific rendering correctness. As long as it looks cool, it's pretty good. And then here, Shift D to duplicate that one. And here, I'm going to convert this one into a point light. Bring it out to here. And let's boost this now when it's on the inside of the glass. Let's bring it to 20,000 or something. Okay, let's not bring it to 20,000. Let's bring it to 5,000. And make radius smaller. Okay, and then you, I'd probably have to fake a little bit in here with the darker. Hide that one first. I'll do I to inset, Alt E to extrude long face normals. Should I go darker there? Maybe. I don't know, this has turned out to not be a vending machine anymore. This is some booth or something. <laughs> I don't know what, what type of booth it is, but... There. And maybe this glass is too strong. Maybe that's where it is. So you can change the glass strength here. So I'm just dragging this fractional slider or there we go. So that looks pretty cool, I think. It's not a bending machine, but and then again, 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 again. Why do I see again all the time? Shift D to duplicate scale here, Alt D, extra long face normals. And let's put a, another glowy stripe here, of course. 
uh, I-10 set. All the extra long face normals. Sh I should have really announced how long this stream is going to be, but I don't, didn't even know, to be honest with myself. Maybe like that. All right. And uh, maybe more stuff uh, to emphasize that this is the ground floor. Maybe I'll alt click on that for loop select. Shift D to duplicate it and bring it down to there. And alt D, extra long face normals. Creates like a little sidewalk or ledge thing. Here sometimes I do on the corners as well to make it less sharp and blend like that. Uh, I'd probably grab any face again as usual. Something maybe there. Scale Y. I'm going to check the chat in a minute again. I'm probably missing loads of things. E to extrude and bring it up to here. And again, it doesn't have to make sense. Ah, how many times have I said that? Control B, scale Z and bring it down to there. And sometimes I even wing it like this. Check this out. Alt Z to see through. Scale Z, bring it down to there. And here's how much I cheat sometimes. I just go Alt Z so I can see through. Shift D to duplicate it. And for an OCD mind like myself, where I'm like sometimes a perfectionist and stuff, this hurts my soul. Uh, but it's okay. It's therapy for perfectionists. Shift D, God, look, I'm not even. Shift D, and there we go. Shift D. There we go. So that's it. And. Everything, if it's bland surfaces like this, every time you see something uh, clean like this, you need to dress it up with something, I think. And again, just to make it interesting, Shift D to duplicate, try to find some polygons. E to extrude, bring this down. <clears throat> e, Shift D, and now it suddenly makes more sense. Maybe there's something here. Shift D, duplicate, and here's like an array of some square pipes. Shift D. And as long as there's something there, something is better than nothing, usually. <laughs> Control R, loop cut. Here's a, maybe a side axis thing. We'll bring those. E to extrude. Send them in. A bit like that. And then I to inset, E to extrude. And on this side, it's like a blue light. There we go. And everywhere where there's plain stuff like this, do something simple. I'll do panels here instead to make it different. So move that on to there. IT inset 0.2, Alt S 0.2. And here, IT inset, E to extrude. Here's some uh, weird hatch too. And it just keeps going like that. And then I won't do the back now because I've streamed for so long already anyway. <clears throat> And then keep playing around maybe with the lights, add some lighting so it makes sense. Maybe these would make some uh, orange light here. And I'm going to check the chat in a second. There, and I think these, uh, I need a light here by these things. Here we can create maybe a strong light source up here. Pink. Let's bring it up to like 10,000. No. If you go too bright, it's not going to look so good, apparently. And it's too pink. Or it's the wrong shade of pink. Red air looks cooler. Yeah, I think so. And then to make it make a little bit more sense, I'll probably stick something out here. So it makes probably less sense. Like, <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? All right, now it suddenly makes sense again, because now it's got something there that covers it. We like that. And flat roofs like this usually probably looks, usually probably is a bad choice of words, but usually looks bad, or it probably looks bad. Any of those two would work to say, I chose none. Okay, I, I wonder if Arvid is uh, flipped out now. I think he's had to throw in the towel. Gee. All right, control S, I saved it. Let's check out the chat. <clears throat> Ar Arvid, are you still here? I, no, not, you cannot possibly still be awake. Let's check out the chat. I'm, I'm gonna look for all the big super chats. 
I probably missed some super chats. Apologies, because uh, they expire after a while. And all my uh, so Jizula, do you save? I just saved it for the first time now. Ah, okay. You spotted that. I didn't actually. Oh, nice. Okay. Thanks, Arvid. I thought it looked a little bit funny when I was copying those. So again, that that really made my OCD thing flip up. No, so L L. I don't even notice half of these things until later on. L. So that shows that you're still awake. I'm, I'm, I think I'm more impressed by that than the fact that I actually spotted an issue. No personal attacks here. But you do actually go to bed very early for being, I don't know, German. You're probably a sign of good health, to be honest. If anything. Shift D to duplicate. I've probably done something wrong again, but never mind. You can press the middle mouse button to lock it to an axis as well. That's a bit of a... Or you can do Shift D and then press X here. Okay, and then I'm screwed it up anyway. And Shift D, duplicate. I think our chop shop food is home now. Nice Chinese food. Ooh, nice. Alt said. I, I could probably put some weird paneling here too. Scale Y. And E to extrude. Item set. You can see it makes uh, makes your life easy when you don't have to actually think too much what's going there. As long as it looks alright, you should go for it. And here, control R, control R, E to extrude. And I mean, for any of those who, who were in the live stream, the 24 hour live stream, this is pre pretty much what I did for 22 hours to create that asteroid city. All right, let's check out the chat. Space crawler, you can improve that light cylinders a step further with a layer weight node color ramp leading into the emission input on the principled BSDF. But I don't know if that works in EVE 2. I don't know either actually if it works. I don't really spend too much time. I should really learn more about the... I just find like a method that I sort of... and then I add a little thing every now and then to what works and I learn as I go along as well like probably a lot of you guys are doing. E to extrude. I just spotted some flat surfaces there and my brain went, this is not acceptable. So let's make it a bit different there. There we go. I don't know what this building would be used for at all, but I'm pretty sure it's got some significant uh, value. Like shifty, now it's got even more value because we've got more satellite dishes. And we need a big canister or something. Uh, to create a big canister. Shifty, we're going to do it low poly style, of course. Uh, we'll do right click, subdivide. It doesn't look like a circle at all, of course, but now it does. Where did it go? Scale, X, right click, subdivide, circle, scale, and E to extrude. Control R, Alt S. This is like an old uh, Wild Wild West barrel thing. I have no idea why this would be. Oh, it's got some radioactive stuff in it. I don't usually use green emissive stuff, but now I am, because this is just like radioactive waste. That's right there. There's like a little peephole here on this thing. Alt E. Alt E. So you can actually see even from the side, from ground level here, <clears throat> you can see that not to be swam in. You shouldn't be bathing in this thing. Unless you want to glow forever. Scale. Let's stack a few of these here on the back. Shift D, X. Oh, I've also got screen f space uh, reflection on here, by the way. If um, That's what's creating a lot of the reflective stuff. Forgot to mention. Pretty important thing to say. Alright, let's have a look. Uh, Terry Imps for Shrek. Infensia. I started learning Blender like a month ago and i want to learn to texture and use nodes but it's too overwhelming do you have any tips on what i should do yeah don't do it just you <laughs> uh, just use this simple uh, texturing method anyway but with that uh, jokingly that is said i'd say start with a simple object of course uh, like a I don't know, a car, a, like, a, a, by no means I don't mean, I mean like a really boxy car. If you look at my lo, low poly car tutorial, for example, super simple, or 10 minute, ten cars in 10 minutes. And then try to get a, a simple shape, probably a car is a bad example, do a fish instead or something. 
and then do UV unwrapping. Do the automatic UV unwrapping to begin with. And then, oh, what am I saying? I'm no, I'm no good uh, at uh, making advice for, for, uh, for texturing, but I should actually create a little super simple texturing technique, maybe. I think you'll find a lot more tutorials on the topic. But when I looked at them, uh, Grant, Gant, Grant Abbott has got really good. Look at, uh, he did a tutorial. Actually, this is a good, here's an advice for you if you want to learn texturing, because I have a vague memory of this one. Grant Abbott, that's his name, right? Grant Gabbett? Abbott Grant, Grant, oh, sorry. Grant Abbott. Okay, I should, I'm actually gonna look, because he's he does really good stuff. Grant Abbott, how can I forget? Yeah, Grant Abbott, look him up on YouTube. And he does uh, like texturing of a tree trunk or a, a tree stump where he textured it. Check out that tutorial because I remember it being pretty good. He, I think he painted it inside uh, Blender, Blender's own like texture painting. And I should really be doing a tutorial like that too. I wonder if I also did, uh, if you also, here, here's another one. Check out my 10 minute modeling challenge, a cheetah, cheetah, the, the, oh no, a lynx. Check that one out, because I did uh, a very basic texturing modeling in that one, I think. So check that one out. Highly recommend it. <laughs> My own rubbish. There we go. So the modeling guy. Infensia, like game design, but where do I start? An improving Blender, because I'm not sure. Okay, so you like game design, but where do I start? And improving Blender, because I'm not sure. Okay, two different things there, I guess. So uh, let's see now. Game design is a very tricky one. I've actually came up with so many game ideas that I was convinced was going to be amazing to play. I just thought, I'm, this is going to be the next big game. It's going to be the most amazing thing that's ever been created. It's going to be so much fun to play. And a good thing is that you can prototype stuff quite fast in Unity. And I realized when I created those game prototypes that it sucked. It wasn't actually that fun at all to play. Uh, not at all as I envisioned it anyway. So I've read up quite a lot about game design and uh, I created my own templates for game design that I'm still learning and still processing. And my plan is to go through a lot of successful games, play them, and I've created this uh, questionnaire for myself and I'm gonna fill in my questionnaire, like what is it that I like about the game? What is it that I find uh, is uh, like catchy or good? What makes me wanna play more? And I'm also gonna look at some of the top reviews to see what people like about it. Um, and then I'm going to start to maybe form a little bit of opinion because a, a lot of it has got to do with the human psychology, uh, whether a game is good or not. And I think a lot of indie developers create a game and they say, if it was only marketed better, I would make a fortune. But I don't think that's the case because I think like an indie game, it, it could look good. It could be decent. It's so many games out there that are, are doing well. So you really have to try to find those things that really are like grabs the player's attention and that's something it's very difficult i think in game design to do it and i'm not by any means uh, i was going to say i'm no expert but i'm not even a new because i've got so much to learn in this topic but i'm going to enjoy learning it because i really want to try to figure out what is it about for example uh, super mario when that was created anyone can make a platformer but why is that particularly good is it uh, is it the progression? Is it the simplicity? Is it the type of enemies? Is it uh, a combination with the story? Is it the tactile feel of how it works? Is it so many things? And I want to try to analyze those and make uh, make notes of what actually made this particular game really good. So maybe that's something you could do as well if you want to learn about game design. Look up how uh, games that are successful and try to pick out why they are successful. I don't think it's usually a random coincidence. They have something really catchy about them. And again, it ties into human psychology a lot. If you look at, um, like, so there's uh, like basic psychology of people, like people like to build, to create stuff. They like to gather, they like protection, to protect things. Um, you know, it comes down to how we evolved as humans. And then, uh, so gather, collect, and also if, if the higher you get up on this weird pyramid of uh, high human psychology at the top, you've got stuff like uh, um, being able to, I, I don't even know the English word for it, but um, uh, prestigious things and being able to be liked and having other people liking you. And if you look at the likes of uh, Fortnite, for example, they've pretty much taken everything out of that pyramid of uh, success or uh, sorry, sorry, pyramid of uh, human um, psychics and uh, psychology. And they've actually built everything into the game. So you've got like the action to attack people. You've got the uh, crafting thing to build the ramps. You've got uh, the Fortnite dances so you can show off uh, when you're good how, how cool your dance is and stuff like that. So everything like that is packaged. is by definitely not a coincidence that it's uh, packaged in that way. 
So there we go. <clears throat> Someone said, Jules actually said a really good thing here. Keep it really simple. And that's definitely a very good advice to start. That's probably one of the, the most strongest uh, or best advice as well, because uh, I have a, a, I've had a lot of contacts from people that have so grand ideas, and I think it's really cool that they do, but it's like, uh, I'm gonna create EVE Online, only a bigger universe, or I'm gonna make Fortnite, but with better graphics, or I'm gonna make uh, Civilization, but with an infinite world. And it's really cool to have uh, like ideas and, and drives like that, but it's not gonna work. Uh, but it's fun to just like entertain your thoughts and have that as a dream project. But then start, do yourself a favor and start super basic and create the most basic game uh, mechanics that you can even imagine. And uh, I usually fall back on the likes of uh, platformers or space shoot em up type of game, top down scrollers, um, that type of thing. So, because it's so easy to, to just play around with it. So, I think I saw Jim Engstrom here somewhere. Are you still in the chat? Jim Engstrom is my old time friend. We grew up together and uh, he's super cool. I have to go and visit him now that I've got Corona passed. Let me know when I can come now. I think I'm healthy. I don't think I, I, I pass it anymore. Ooh, we've got King Cade. Thanks a lot for the super chat. Two dollars here. Uh, thank you so much for your contribution. Where can I get that color palette? Check the description either on this video or any of my previous videos. It's got downloads there. Are you using Filmic or sRGB for color management? I'm using Filmic, I'm pretty sure. Uh, if I can even remember where are those settings. I think I heard some, some guys say, don't ever change it from Filmic, so I just didn't dare to change it. I forget where it is, Film. No, Color... Mm -mm -mm -mm. Color management, is it down there? There. Okay, so display device sRGB, but um, I've got filmic there, if that makes any sense. I ho hope I haven't missed any anything crucial here now. Sorry if I'm missing a lot of chat uh, a lot of chat messages here. So I think uh, Jules, I think Infancia must have drunk some very special coffee today. I don't know. Am I more energetic than normal? And wrecked. I'm s are you still here as well? Like, are you off work today or something? <laughs> Satellite fish arrays. I like that. So I've got another at Infancy here. Uh, Pyro Mapes 2K. I've watched you make a lot of uh, building outsides. Would be uh, would you be able to do a video of doing interior? Yeah, that, that'd be cool. I, I've got uh, very basic interiors. If you check my ch uh, history, check out... Uh, like a, a, an apartment, 10 minute modding challenge, I think. That was one of them. And my, of course, my cyberpunk room, that was an interior. You, you've missed the critical satellite fish. Yeah, uh, what is a satellite fish? I, don't know. I know it's probably some, like it's like a satellite dish, but with a fish. Let's put something here. To, again, I, w I was allergic to the fact that this region here was like empty, so. Uh, check this out. I'll do some weird array here of something. E to extrude, S to scale, Y. E to extrude. And then Shift D. E to extrude. I should probably round the stream off now. How long have I been streaming now? Two hours nearly. Couldn't just go for a 24. No, couldn't. <laughs> Got too much good work to do at the moment. There we go. Here's an array of some sort. Now they're gonna... The, whoever invested in uh, adverts on that big screen now are gonna be disappointed. Because it's gonna be blocked by this thing. Okay, I have no idea what I'm doing there. Let's uh, quit while I'm staying on top. And be some sort of a. It's like abstract art in the in the shape of a building. And that's a scale x zero. It wasn't actually flat. That thing. E to extrude. Whoop. Okay. What am I doing here?
weird stuff. Construction. Work in progress. Let's have a look. Oh, I'm <laughs> showing my... S <laughs> Here we go again. Okay, that's a sign. Okay, I was showing my face when I was doing some modeling there. I think that's a, a good sign to say that uh, we're going to round things off there, I think. L-F-M-A-O. L-M-F-A-O. So if you... Rick, this is nothing new here, by the way. I've done this... Uh, I, I, I keep modeling. I switched to full screen because I have the, a weird imagination that someone actually wants to see the guy who's talking. And then, when the most important thing comes, when I'm going to show something... But it's probably good that I actually didn't show it because it didn't look that amazing. I just created this weird array of something at the top there. Only took a few minutes to notice. Yeah, I'm going faster now. <clears throat> That's not a low poly heart, but back to you, Wrecked as well. Thanks a lot. You are pretty. You are pretty. It's okay. I thought you say you're pretty okay, but thanks. Blue steel coming up, coming coming along your way. This has been so much fun. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm. Um, I think we're gonna round things off there. Two hours. Yeah, I have to go and eat. Why don't you ding in Discord when you go live? Or am I totally wrong and you do? Well, whew, Discord is... Uh, my Discord looks like a Christmas tree. I've got like 10 billion DMs that I missed. And I'm part of like eight servers that I have a lot of uh, things to really tend to. But it's just like every time I touch it, I get into one of the things and then I get sidetracked. And just uh, excuses, excuses, excuses. There's no such thing. No one wants to hear someone complaining about that there's too much to do. So I'm absolutely not unhappy about it. I just have to realize and live with the fact that I can't really do everything that I want to do. This is the worst excuse I've ever heard. Pretty good av 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 avocado. At least it's an excuse. All right, guys. Thank you very much for joining the stream. It's been a lot of fun, and um, I'm going to press Control S, and uh, I'll upload this model to uh, my Patreon site. I'll uh, just have to go and eat first, and then I'll uh, go back. I haven't uh, uploaded anything there recently because I haven't had the 10 minute modeling challenge things going there. So, uh, and Rekt, thank you for the stream, my friend. It made me feel better. That's great. It was nice to be able to join in and one of these, and I'm happy to see you back again. Enjoy the rest of your day and don't work too hard. Uh, well, here's the thing. I don't understand, like, if you, like, work is one thing, and doing something that you love doing is one thing, and if, like, the game, I'm not getting paid to do it, so officially, I guess it's not really work, and can you kill yourself doing your hobby so much that you, uh, that it's uh, bad for you? Probably. So I'm going to try to sleep a little bit more. <laughs> Alright, Julia Alder is here as well. Thank you, and bon appetit. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, Rossi Bossi, of course. Uh, Al Einstein, very nice to see you too. And everyone, thank you very much for joining this uh, uh, stream. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, maybe we'll do it again next Thursday. Maybe there's a random premiere. I don't even know. So you probably don't even know it. But um, something's going to happen next Thursday, 7 o'clock, as usual, CET, European time. So, and... Uh, yeah, the stream is about to end, Ecto. And Nico Sparks, Jim Engstrom, my friend as well, there, everyone. Thank you very much. And until next time, take care and uh, have fun modeling and don't lose motivation. Keep at it, uh, do different things, and you'll get there in the end. So I'm going to find out where my end stream button is now. I have no idea where it is. Don't forget to upvote. That comes from Arvid, who's got most downvotes in my whole history, but that's okay. Play us off on the piano. Yeah. It's too far away. And you probably... And it's, uh, but uh, and that's another excuse. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. And I've found the end stream. I'm going to click it in three, two, one. See you next week. Bye for now. No outro. Oh, and there's a confirmation button, of course. So end stream. Are you really sure? Not yet. Your stream will stop immediately and you will no longer be live. Well, if I'm going to eat, that's probably pretty good. So, let's try it again. Three, two, one, bye. End.